current. Uh, so every feature now has a degree of experience rate. And as you can see, the numbers here correspond to the numbers we looked at earlier. The five, four, three, two, one. And that makes it possible for us to, by, by multiplying the, the uncertain factor with the estimate we made, to, to get a range estimate for how long it will take minimum to maximum to make this, to implement this feature. Uh, it's, 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 it's very simple, it's just, just basic math. Uh, basically, we just multiply the ideal estimate with the lowest and the highest. So a no-take link, which we estimate to take one ideal hour at a degree of experience of five, because we've done this a thousand times before, would probably not, would take somewhere between 0.8 to 1.25 hours. Uh, now, the administration, the administration, the workflow we mentioned, the rules-based workflow is something we're not, we're not equally unsure about how it will work. Maybe because we're not sure that the client is extremely sure about what they want, or we may misunderstand the client, or we have never done the exact thing before. It uh, would be something between 2.5 to 10 hours. <coughs> so. uh, and when you're done, first of all, you can first of all you, you can sum up your ideal estimate. This is this is basically what we've probably taken the, the best possible circumstances. Uh, you can sum up the the high range, which is basically how long it would take under the worst possible circumstances. The range, low range, if you're lucky, if you, all your estimates are, are very, you know, you know are, are, are always high, you know, you can just 147, you know, but that never happens. I can tell you that. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of pessimistic, you know. I'm, that's what the salespeople are always complaining about. Like I'm too pessimistic in my estimates. I'll show you later how you can reduce these ranges because they, they 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 tend to go on the high side. Uh, make them more sellable. <coughs> and then the average degree of experience, that will show you a bit about how uncertain this project, whether it's something you've done before, if it's if it's if it's if it's somewhere around three, hmm, that is like that is a project that is then it's all new new unknown terrain. It's unknown waters. Um, now as you can see these ranges here, they're all symmetrical. They're 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 twenty five percent extra, twenty five percent less. Uh, that means that our estimate can uh, the actual can actually be less than the estimate uh, and more less or more uh, so for example if you had a symmetrical uh, we had a uh, and we had a symmetrical uncertainty at a low rate would be like in this case it would it would differ from 0 0.8 to 1.25 percent 1.25 x uh, in a case when we had a high uncertainty it would differ from 0.25 to 4 x this is like the, the highest uncertainty we can think of but there's also a symmetrical uncertainty, which you probably all know. This will take as least of the, uh, take as least this much time, or it can only get worse. Um, from point x to point four x, you know, you can you can go point x or or two x. Um, so all these estimates, you can we can map them out in a table like so. <clears throat> on the left hand, you see the pessimistic <laughs> estimates. Uh, these are you know the ones I prefer. <laughs> you know, they're they're the safe ones. And they're either symmetrical, like I said, that your estimates can either be too high or too low, or, or they can be asymmetrical, uh, like, like that they will take at least as much time as you estimate, if not more. Uh, the other would be to have estimates that are, that are, that are, that, exactly. the other are the optimistic ones. They are the ones that maybe be easier to sell to the client. They're not, they're offering less of a range, but they may not be as realistic. Sorry, a question? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, well, that's what the sales people say. You know, my estimate, my, my, the range is too high, so it's, it's just realistic, you know. You know? But you know. The, the, the point is to make something that's relatively that is reasonably realistic, but still possible to sell. So you should, so so you should probably should you should uh, work these numbers a bit for something that works for you. Um, I'll get back to the, that in a bit. So visually, the pessimistic ones would map out like so. Um, if we show them visually. You see there's a high, you see the range here going from uh, how much the estimate can change from low to high uh, compared to the optimistic where they cannot change as much. And compared to the estimate, call this is what you get. It's just one side. So using the estimation sheet, using the template that I described earlier, you can, you can, you can apply this. You can basically just you click on the, on the tab that says uncertain factors and then you can enter the, uh, the, the ranges you want to use. Uh, on the right there, you have ranges that are that are optimistic and pessimistic, and that are asymmetrical or symmetrical. You can use the ones that work best for you. Now, when you, what's important is that you you learn from your experience. In the projects you make, you should record how much time a feature took to implement, and 
then sort of take that take that back, take that knowledge with you, and update your estimates, update your update your applied your applied um, um, factors here to something that fits your organization and fits your. That's why it's very important to track time spent in each feature of the final project. We'll make your estimates better. Um, so the bottom line is, it's easy to estimate what you know, which is five. It's hard to estimate what you know you don't know. You know, we have no idea we should have three. It's very hard to estimate things that you don't know you don't know. That is the, you know, sounds kind of obvious, but you know, it's... Uh, other things that would come, that would, you would have to add to a project is administration project management. You need, you need a project what, management. What, Well, I guess there's no good answer to that question. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess there's no good answer to that question. Uh, so what usually comes in in addition to, to, to just the, the development time in your project would be administration project management. You need to have a project manager working on the project. Uh, you need to produce a lot of documentation, project plans, and so on. You need to do testing. Uh, call to assurance, you will need to, be, you need, will need to do uh, unit testing. You will have to do other forms of testing on how you work and, and the requirements of the project. Theming. You can either estimate fee, fee, theming as a known feature, or you can think it is, it is something that you add on top of all the features you have. Uh, the axis of a factor, like it, that is no, the total development. Yeah, exactly. Like the time you got, the time, the time, the development time point times 1.25. So in the end now, you should have a, a, total, a total sum. And uh, what you do now is compare it to your guesstimate, and this will help you do two things. First of all, you will see, you will you will you will have to think whether there's, if there's a big difference, you will have to think about whether why there's a big difference, and if there's something you missed. Secondly, it will help you make better initial guesstimates, uh, since you can think you can think uh, you have to think um, you have to reflect over it more actively, and uh, and it helps you learn from experience. So some important uh, principles you can apply when you estimate are these. Uh, it's better to start big and reduce later. It's better to set an estimate you're very comfortable with and then chip away at it, at it as you will learn more about the exact requirements. Uh, it is very useful to develop an awareness of time for yourself and for your developers. Uh, for yourself to think about how much time you spend on something. But also for your developers, like to, to have a culture of, of, understanding, of understanding estimates and trying to meet estimates. And one way to do that is to do every morning meeting or every scrum meeting to ask developers to report how much time they spent on something compared to how much was estimated. To help them learn to become better estimators and to learn them and to teach them how to, how to be better at doing things on the time allotted. Uh, so, um, and secondly, if you're unsure, you can ask an expert. You know, there's always someone who can help estimate you at your company. If you're not an estimator yourself or a developer, you can ask one of your best developers to help you do the estimates. Uh, and if you want to learn more about estimation, there are two books I recommend. It's uh, one called Software Estimation, and which is uh, which uh, teaches a lot of good techniques and practices, and it's also Agile Estimating Planning, which shows tells you how you can use estimating in, in Agile software development. Thank you very much. <laughs>